Uh, you're listening to Sin 90.7 and online. I'm Dominic and I'm joined today with the vocalist from an amazing band in the hardcore scene. From Comeback Kid, Mr. Andrew Neufeld. How are you, mate? I'm pretty good, you? I'm doing, re- I'm doing pretty well. Your fifth album, Die Knowing, has just come out and it's and it's pretty stellar. It's amazing that like a, well, I think it's amazing that a hardcore band can put out releases that are like consistently better every album. So when it came time to sort of write and record this album, where did you draw influences from? With this album, uh, I think we kind of like uh, we, we tried to take a, a bit more of like a simplistic and more direct approach. We wanted to write some shorter songs, but um, as far as the influences, it's a little bit of a throwback record. Maybe not for all the songs, uh, but a lot of the songs are a little bit of a throwback to some of the 90s hardcore uh, that we used to listen to, or that, you know, the, the, the first couple records that we made is a little bit of a throwback line to that. Uh, we just tried to write some fun music that we would be able to play live and have a good time with and not really overcomplicate it. Um, so being a, it being sort of like a like a throwback to older records, is that why was it a bit of a, a, a flashback to have the old vocalist of Comeback Kid, Scott Wade, come in for a song? Like, how did that sort of come about? That was just um, we we did a, a, a few shows with him last year. Um, we did some anniversary shows from our first record, Turn It Around. We had a ten year anniversary uh, from that, like, and we did a few shows with that. And uh, we're all like really good friends still, so it just was kind of a cool idea. I thought uh, it would work out pretty cool for him to stay on it. So um, it was a very disjointed effort, but like we uh, recorded the drums in Cali, we had recorded the music in California, I recorded my vocals for that song in Italy, and he recorded his vocals in Toronto. So it was a very kind of just sending each other files and just a fun little project that we were able to work on for that song. Oh, cool. The the previous uh, like the previous comeback kid record, Symptoms and Cures, which uh, for my money, it's it's one of my favorite records. It was a, definitely the best like hardcore album of of that year, 2010. Um, it had more of a punk vibe, uh, and Die Knowing is is somewhat like it's heavier. I think. Um, how much of that was like a conscious choice? Um, I'm not sure how conscious it was. Like it was the kind of thing where we would we have such a, a heavy hardcore background. I think just like. The kind of style of hardcore that we listen to normally, and uh, just you know, just yeah, our background and what we we've been playing in the past and stuff. Um, we so when we were writing the songs, it just kind of came out, and uh, when we kind of listened back to some of them, we're like, holy, fuck, there's a lot of like heavy like rippers on this record. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a little bit. Um, it wasn't like a totally conscious decision, but um, we were surprised at how heavy it did turn out towards the end of it, and we were, and, and we were kind of stoked on it. Um, we still have some melodic st- songs in there, some more punk rock, the vibey kind of songs in there, but we kind of decided because of all the songs that were really heavy, we, we, we put the heavy stuff towards the beginning of the record and, and uh, some of the more melodic stuff towards the end, and kind of so the record starts heavy and kind of ends on a brighter note, and that was kind of how we thought it would flow, black, flow the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely works. Speaking of uh, sort of like a brighter note, your other project, Sights and Sounds, have recently put out an EP too, sort of like the end of last year, which it sounds positively like jubilant in comparison to some songs on Die Knowing. Um, so is expressing that sort of like positive side on that project allow you to go heavier and darker for Comeback Kid? Um, I, one thing that I've kind of like tried to, tried to do lately is kind of, um, I, just, I just wanted to, as far as songwriting, just kind of, if I wanted to write a melodic, maybe happier song, I'd rather do that through a different um, avenue than Comeback Kid, you know? Um, with Comeback Kid, I wanted to definitely make it what it is, and, and we've been a band for so long, so I just want to keep in the confines of what it is, a, you know, a energetic, hardcore band. And that's why, with Sights and Sounds, it's kind of just um, some melody and some other kind of music and songs that we I want to get out. It's kind of just a different thing. And that, the, the EP that we put out with that, um, was kind of just uh, 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 something that we were working on in between, and um, and I, again, it was just kind of a collection of songs. And I wasn't really sure how that would turn out, um, but then we had some tours that were coming up, and we had some tour offers that um, and we're like, okay, we'll release these types of sound songs um, as they are. And it, yeah, it's it's really hard for me to kind of like. Usually, I, I like to have a vision of how my songs will turn out, but they always turn out different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that uh, it just always like. Uh, they always turn out somewhat cool. I, 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 I like how they turn out, but it, they, always, they always come out, uh, you know, a little bit different than how I always imagine it. But uh, I think that's the beauty of it. It's the, it's the mystery of the, of the road you take when you start writing a song, you know? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Are there any plans to bring Sights and Sounds back down to Australia at all? Yeah, it's one of those things where it, 
if it just makes sense financially and someone wants to bring us out. Like we've, we've come down to Australia before. We came down two years ago. Um, and uh, I have some plans, hopefully, to go to Australia towards the end of the year. Um, so maybe we could work it out, but it just all has to do with timing and if it, if it works out for everybody. But we would definitely like to make that happen. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And speaking of touring, the last time Comeback Kid was down here was for Boys of Summer, uh, just about a year ago, I think. Um, when are you guys going to bring the new yeah. album to Australia? Yeah, and that's kind of, it's all in, in talks right now. We have some ideas of packages we could bring down there, but nothing's really set in stone quite yet. And, you know, we might... Uh, Pound Soundwave again, try to get to, get us get us on that tour again or something like that. I'm not sure. We'll we'll, we'll definitely be coming within the next year or so with uh, with Dinoins to Australia for sure. Awesome. Um, so it's Di- a matter of time and when it when it all to work out. Yep. Um, so Dinoing is out now uh, by the incomparable hardcore legends Comeback Kid and from that awesome band lead vocalist Andrew Newfeld. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I fucking love Melbourne. <laughs>